my Coco Daisy friends. Today we are going to put together a dashboard using pieces from the Acorn Lane November 2020 kit. I have a piece of paper from the memory keeping kits, a scrap of ribbon from my stash, and then a pocket card from the memory keeping pocket kit, and a my background paper is from the planner kit, and then I have pre-cut the pieces of the wreath that we're going to put together, and those are from just a various assortment paper, some from my stash, some from the Coco Daisy kit. Some of them are actually from the October kit as well. So I'm going to sort these out, and we'll get started putting it together. My first step is to trim the paper to A5 size and punch holes in it so that I make sure that none of my design elements get where the holes are going to go. So and now I am pulling back my wreaths, my two bottom wreaths that are green, and I'm deciding which one's going to go on top and which one's going to go on bottom, and just kind of generally getting an idea for where I want them to go. And so I am going to bend them just ever so slightly around the edges just to give them some more dimension. I'm going to glue them in the middle but I kind of want them to tip up just a little bit. Once we're finished and the leaves are on it, you probably won't see the green bits very much, but I do want them back there just for a little added dimension. So I'm using Aileen's Turbo Tacky Glue, um, and it dries quickly. And so I am not an experienced crafter. I've only been doing uh, planning for uh, decorative planning for about a year and a half. So if you are an experienced crafter and you're watching me do this and you think this is not the right way to do this, if you have some better way that you would use for um, adhering these types of items onto the page, I'd love to hear it. Um, I love trying out new things and like I said, this is a relatively new world for me. So I just use what I have until I see someone on a video do it differently and then I try out something else. Both of these wreath files are cut files from the Silhouette Design Store as well as the leaves that I used for this wreath. Um, they did not come together, they were individual files. I couldn't find a wreath that was just autumn leaves. So I just kind of put together several different cut files to make this project. I don't like how the brown leaves, you can see the white core of the paper and they have little white um, bits where the silhouette cut them and it kind of has a little bit of paper that shows. So I am going to go in here with a brown brush pen and just go along the edge of every one of these little leaves just to cover up all the white bits. It just makes it brown and then it's just not nearly as noticeable. Um, I'm especially going to do this because I am bending the leaves ever so slightly so you would definitely see that white part more um, as I put them on the wreath. So I'm just going in and I've sorted out my leaves and I'm going to be very methodical about this and do the same thing over and over again on my leaf, but I'm going to bend each one of the individual leaves just a little bit um, as I put them on the wreath. And so before I cut everything out, I measured to see how many leaves I thought that I needed and I figured it out exactly. But you can see as I go along, it doesn't quite work out that they I think I put them closer together. So I'm just dabbing a little bit of glue on the back of each leaf and bending each one as I put it in there. Um, and I pretty much put the same leaf on the same side. I try to vary it a little bit so that it looks a little bit different, but I just continuously put brown leaf, yellow leaf, red leaf, craft leaf, and went around the circle like that and just kept putting them down, trying to let them have a little bit of dimension. Um, right about here, I was getting very nervous because I was getting to the end and I didn't have any more leaves. But um, 
I have that little gap there and I was a little concerned but I have the branches over there and I thought well I think I can make this work out so I figured out the branches and I had initially thought I would use that embroidery floss but I didn't like it I thought it was too floppy so I went and started pulling some ribbon and some yarn and so I like the color of the yarn best and so this is my works tool to that I use to tie the ribbon and once I got the ribbon tied, I decided it was too fluffy, for lack of a better word. So um, I looked at all my other choices and went back and used this very tiny um, orange satin ribbon, which I think in the end it worked out fine. Um, it's a little bit brighter than I would have liked, but it, I had it. So now I'm going back and doing the same thing with the branches. Um, I'm putting the brown marker around the edges and gluing each one of them down and then I'm going to put the ribbon in the center and my glue got stuck so I had to get it cleaned out um, but there you go I have my little wreath done so now I'm just going to set up the rest of the page so I have glitter dots from both October of 2020 and November of 2020 just to see which ones I'm going to want to use and so um, I love this pocket card and I got lots of use out of it in my planner in different places. So since I had the works tool out, I used it to trim my pocket card. But as you can see, um, I didn't press down hard enough with it. So I had to use an X-Acto knife to trim it. And so now I'm getting my coordinating paper. And I had thought that this stripe would work well because of my teal binder. I thought that blue and the stripe would pull out the teal in the binder. So um, I'm just trimming it to be the same width as the pocket card and the page at this point. And, um, and then I'm going to trim it using a different trimmer since I didn't have such good luck with the works tool. And um, I realized once I get it there and I look at it that um, my pieces are too wide. There's no way I'm gonna be able to fit all that. Plus I don't really like the scale of it. So I can see as I put it on there, I just want a little smidge of that paper. Um, I am not practiced enough at this to know these kinds of things just, you know, off the top of my head. So I just eyeball it here and I trim a piece to go on the bottom that matches that. And when I get it there, I'm like, it's too small. So now I'm going to trim another piece and I think it's slightly wider, but at least it's close. So um, then I have the two pieces, and so um, I'm just going to kind of decide where they're going to go, see if my ribbon looks okay underneath them, and then when I go to flip them over to glue them, uh, I realize that the back side has brown plaid, and I decide that I like that better. So, um, so I glue them down with the brown plaid side up for the two little trim pieces. So now I have my card down and my little top trim piece and bottom trim piece and now it's time to put the ribbon on. So what I'm going to do is I just eyeballed the center and I made two dots about a half inch apart maybe a little bit more than that and so then I wanted to punch through the holes where the um, card had gone on top of them. So unfortunately when I do this you see it goes over the end in November but that's okay because it is what it is. So I just punched those two holes with just a plain old hole puncher. And then I thread this velvet ribbon in through the back and back to the back side through those two holes. And then I just puff up the little piece in the center. And then on the back side, all I'm going to do is send it back through the opposite hole that it came out of, if that makes sense. So that it just kind of you just kind of tie a knot with the paper on the inside of it. And um, you just have to make sure that you twist the, if you have, with this ribbon, it's velvet on one side and then it's not anything on the back side. So you just have to twist it so that the velvet comes on the front for both sides. So um, you can see I twisted it right there on the back side. So you want your twist to be on the back side. And it does make a bump on the back side, so you do have to create some clearance for that. Um, but it makes a cute little knot on the front side of your um, card. 
I used to work for a stationery company and we did Christmas cards and birthday cards and we put little ribbons on this like all the time and people would order like 400 and um, I was never the person that tied the bows because I wasn't good at that. I designed cards and um, if they were really busy they'd get me out there to tie a bow or two but I was slow and mine weren't as pretty so they didn't have me do it very often. But I think it turned out nicely there. And so now I'm just looking at my glitter dots. I have both the ones from October and the ones from November. Um, and I decided to use the ones that were kind of the same color as the back of the card. So it almost looks like little water drops on it. Um, I really liked that monochromatic look of the glitter dots on top of the card. And so there you go. So this page is finished. My dashboard is complete. Um, you'll see when I get into the next side, I add one more little die cut up at the top. So this is the next card that we're going to do. And there is that die cut that I added up at the top. Um, just because I was looking at it, it looked a little plain up there. So I have also added um, foam tape to the back of it just to create a clearance for that bow that we tied, the knot on the back of it, the velvet. So um, also it's going to create a space for the um, shaker. So I have cut a leaf out with my silhouette and I prepped this by putting a piece of twine in there just so that I wouldn't forget because the twine needed to go in first and I was so afraid that I was going to glue things down and forget to put the twine. So I just did it right when I got the twine out. So I'm just going to put um, glue on the one side of the leaf because um, it can only stick down to the paper right there. So um, just to hold it in place while it looks like it's pivoting out of the way, it really is just going to stay in place. So this is a super easy way to do a shaker. I just took some of my packaging from Coco Daisy and I put my sequins in there. So I have some dark brown ones and I have some um, stars that are like a copper color. And then I have the leaves that I, I sat there and I pulled out just the leaves from the October um, sequins that we got in our kits. So I'm just taking a piece of good old masking, uh, not masking tape, what is it called? Uh, clear tape and taping the top of the um, packaging. And then I'm gonna fold the top over a little bit uh, less just so that I make sure that I have, it's clear, you're not gonna see where it's folded over. And so um, I'm gonna put that down so that you don't see it where the leaf shape is. And I'm just gonna tape it down with uh, clear tape again. Uh, nothing too fancy here, this is super simple. And um, it's a really easy and cheap way to do a shaker without having to get into a lot of mess. Sometimes I do them different ways, but um, a lot of times I do this because it's really, really easy. So on this one side here, it is very close to the edge and there's not a lot of clearance. So I don't want to see the tape on the front side. Uh, you see how close it is right there. So I'm just going to put the tape down very carefully and just barely cover that um, packaging and it goes off the edge so then I'm just going to trim it off with my scissors and um, it's fussy and I end up having to stop midway and get the tape off because it's I can't couldn't get it to go any further after that point so um, here we go so like I said I am not um, I am I, you know I've only been paper crafting for about a year and a half so there are probably going to be times that I do not do things the best way possible. So, you know, feel free to tell me because um, I'm always looking for new ways. So I saw this on Pinterest where someone had done a shaker and they put glitter paper behind it. And it just made a really neat and different look to it. So I decided to try that this month. I, I've been doing shaker pages just about every month um, just because I kind of like them. They're just kind of a fun, interactive look in your planner. So at this point I realized my back sheet of paper is not the same size as my front sheet of paper and you can see where the, I, since I've already put down the foam tape, you can see the foam tape sticking out. So this is not going to work and I have to find a solution. So um, the obvious solution to me is to trim it down a little bit more and then put a backer piece behind it so that you have just a little frame around it. And so I am just eyeballing this 
and looking at it and um, just trying to decide how it is that I'm going to solve this problem that I have going on here. And then at a certain point, I decide that, you know what, I'm going to think about that in just a minute and I'll go back and put my glitter paper on the back of my card. And once again, I'm just using clear tape for this and I'm just taping it down because you're never going to see any of this. And I just want to make sure that the glitter covers all of the open part of the leaf that you're going to see from the other side. And there you go. There is the shaker page. And I'm going to tie the knot with the twine. And twine is pretty good about not coming untied. But um, the best thing to do when you're tying a bow like that is to just put a little dot of tape of, excuse me, a little dot of glue on it. And that will keep it from coming untied. Um, I have had things in my planner before that I've tied and I've ended up retying them every time I come across them in my planner because they, um, you know, they just keep coming untied. But um, I ended up putting way too big a glob glue there, um, but it does dry clear, so it doesn't matter. You'll never see it once I'm done. So this is the ribbon I'm going to put on the top and... Um, then at this point I start looking at what kind of paper to put on the back. I was going to use packaging from October, but the packaging sheet was not quite tall enough to use. So I decided to use one of the memory keeping papers from the Coco Daisy Acorn Lane Kit. And I used that chevron. And so now I'm just taking the, um, exposing the foam tape. And I realize I really need to put foam tape in all those little places on the sides there. And what I really should have done is put a little piece of foam tape right on the bottom of where that knot was. I did not do that. So you'll see me in a minute um, have to like shove a piece up in there. But it all worked out. It wasn't nearly as difficult as I thought it was gonna be to shove a piece of foam tape up inside the two pieces. It just, it was gonna crinkle right there if I didn't put something there to support it. So I just took a pair of tweezers. I'm kind of not on film very well for that. But, um, so now I'm going back and um, punching the holes through the piece of chevron paper. And I think I punched these holes about four times. And then I'm going to put the leaf there and I don't really exactly like, it's not quite even, so I just have to, since I'm eyeballing it, I have to trim a little bit more on this side, and then a little bit more. Um, I think I haven't trimmed any on the inside at first, and so then I, I don't like that. Even now On the inside, you probably wouldn't have noticed it, but I just kind of wanted it to be even all the way around, so I just trim it off until it looked perfectly even. So now I have my leaf and there, I can finally get it on screen. So it's pretty even, uh, might be a little bit out of whack at the top, but, and there are my two ribbons that I'm going to do. And then I'm going to put the wood veneer pieces on. And um, so I like the way that looks. I think I'm pretty happy with, with, with how that's going. And so uh, now I am just testing out punching a hole in the ribbon because the ribbon goes directly over the hole where the rings are going to go in my binder. And it seems like I do that whenever I put a ribbon on there. Now you can see right there, it works great on the velvet. It does a really clean cut on the velvet. On the satin, it was a big fat mess. But the but the other one is going to be on top of, the velvet one's gonna be on top. So that's the one you're gonna see. So I'm not too concerned. I, I'm gonna to need to punch a hole out of the satin, but it's not gonna show. So I'm just gonna use my tape runner and put a lot of tape down and I'm just gonna put that satin ribbon right there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the velvet ribbon. I'm gonna put it on top of it. Um, and it's been, um, Gosh, at least a week since I've done this project and I haven't had any problems with those ribbons peeling off. Um, in hindsight, I don't, I, you know, I think it was a pretty good way to glue ribbon down. Um, I was worried that those ribbons were going to fray and so I put fray check on them right there. And um, obviously when you put it down, it's wet. It did actually stain the, um, 
the ribbon and so if you look closely at any of the images of that you can see a slight stain on the side where that fray check went but had I not put it there it would have frayed the whole the, it, the ribbon would have just frayed that satin especially the the velvet would have been fine but um so I could have gone back and put fray check on the whole entire ribbon so that then it would be the same color I did not so it's kind of noticeable if you're looking very closely but uh, not terribly noticeable wasn't noticeable enough for me to fix it after the fact so I am using E6000 to glue these little wood pieces down I think you probably could just use tacky glue um, I've heard E6000 is one of the best glues ever so um, I have I had some of it so I thought I would use it for that um, I put that Hello Autumn down, and after the fact, I decided that I wanted to um, put a chipboard piece underneath it. So if you see the final project, it does have a chipboard piece. I did use a paintbrush to get the excess E6000 out of the way, and, um, and I cleaned up my uh, tube, and there you go. The back side is done, and so all I have to do now is uh, adhere it to my back piece, and this project will be done. Thank you so much for watching, and please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Have a great day, everyone.